Hey, so today I thought I might do my first ever book review that I've ever done. And I thought, what's a better way than to start with Cujo by Stephen King? I could start with The Shining, or It. But I only finished reading this book about 10 days ago, and because it's still pretty fresh in my mind, I thought, why not look at it? Now, I decided to do these book reviews because I think it'd be kind of interesting to um, just talk about. I like talking about books and stuff, and movies too. And I thought other people can also look at this and see um, which direction they'd like to go, what, what kind of books they'd like to read, because I'm going to be doing these spoiler free. I will be giving away some plot synopsises, just so you really know what you're getting into, but I'm not going to give anything at all away that's going to hinder your reading experience or ruin it at all. I'm going to be very, very careful not to do that. So, yeah, hopefully this will be a good way to get people to know what they'd like to read. So to start with, I'm going to be talking about the length of this book. Now, my version is a hotter paperback. It's about 420 pages, and yeah, so you can kind of see the thickness there. The print's not overly small, it's pretty average. Um, I was also going to say, although it isn't overly long, there are quite a lot of sections that are really unnecessary and don't need to exist. Trust me, I'm going to explain that a little bit later without... I'll, I'll, I'll get to that, okay? Um, but I do love his filler crap. It's usually super crazy and trippy and entertaining, and it's more Stephen King shit that I get to read. Like, wh why not? Why not? But if you're the kind of person that likes to get straight to the point, then this book might be kind of deceiving, because even though it looks short, um, it does... <laughs> probably does take... like, you know... So, like, this is like, you know, the intro. This is probably, like, where all the action happens. So it does take a little while to get going. So... If you want something short and sharp to read, this one is a little bit of a drag, I guess. I mean, I don't mind it, but I, I understand that some people won't love Stephen King as much as me, so um, they'd probably rather read something a little bit more, let's say, consistently entertaining, consistently exciting, consistently enthralling, because this book is not consistently enthralling. Stephen King's books, on average, are probably closer to between 500 to 550 pages, so this book could be considered on the um, short end of his stuff. But even though um, it definitely is slower and maybe not quite as intriguing as his other stuff, by the end of it, it will be well worth it. Because I, I, I certainly think that um, any Stephen King fan must read this one. Any book fan, it's not a must read, but... It's a pretty good one. Next up, I'm gonna give you a quick overview of the plot. So, this book is set in the fictional town of Castle Rock, Maine, which actually a few of Stephen King's books take place in, so it's a cool thing. But this book follows two families for the most part. One family is about a marriage falling apart, and the other family is about this family, fairly dysfunctional family that owns a big 200 pound St. Bernard gentle giant named Cujo. Cujo, you can see, he's a dog. But the main point of the story comes when Cujo gets infected with rabies after being bitten by a rabid bat. The bat bites him on the nose and it just sends him into a descent of utter madness. It affects his brain and he gets really, really sick and all of a sudden he turns from a gentle giant to not a very good boy. Now, the book's first half is actually just kind of dedicated to knowing who the families are, which it can get it can get pretty slow so it's not until the second half that you actually get some doggo action which to me is where the book succeeds big time i love the scenes with cujo in this book they are so good and don't get me wrong i do like the characters in this one and i love learning about them but there are some really long stretches where nothing really happens but when things do start to happen it's fantastic I'd also love to mention that Stephen King has absolutely no recollection of writing this book. He wrote it at the height of his drug addiction, and he's just gone on to say that he has absolutely no idea about his writing process for it. Like, he literally cannot remember a single thing. And <laughs> that is the reason why this book has some really dumb, crazy, acid trip-like filler. So... That's that reason explained. That's why there's a lot of this shit in it. Um, I'm not gonna go into the details about them, but <laughs> just know you're in for a hell of a trip if you do decide to read this. 
Now, on the terms of Stephen King's scariest works, this is up there. One of the main reasons being for that is that this could happen. There is no supernatural in this book. I know some people say that supernatural elements are here, just because like some slight things are hinted at, but they don't ever come into play. A 200 pound dog could easily contract rabies and attack people mercilessly. This book takes something that everyone knows and loves, a dog, and then just turns it on its head. And that's why, and that's what I think the scariest part of this book is, is that it all could happen, and there's hardly any reason why it couldn't. Now, I live in Australia and rabies don't exist over here, so that's kind of like, you know, a big reason why it couldn't happen here. But in places like, you know, most other places, not most other places, but various other places around the world, this, this could be really plausible. I was gonna say, if you're faint of heart, do not read this book. I know it's a, just about a, I know it's just about a bad dog, but it'll impact you a lot more than you'll expect. It certainly impacted me a lot more than I'd expect. Now I'm going to talk about the book from just a straight opinion, not anything critical. I loved it. It wasn't without its flaws, obviously, but the intensity of this book, and especially the second half, is just phenomenal. I actually flew through the second half of this novel within a couple of days just because of how intense and terrifying it gets. Now, I'm going to be giving all the books that I do reviews on a percentage rating, just because I find rating um, a book out of 5 stars, or even 10 stars, just too hard and too narrowed down to me. So, this book gets a 72%. It gains points over its intensity and terror, and the various angles that the story is told from. But it loses some points due to a fair bit of the book being obvious results of coke. Which I actually love, but going back to the critical point of view, it really isn't very good writing, but that is all made up for by the end of it. Lastly, I'm going to reiterate how horrific this book really is. So, if you can't handle real horror, then watch out. Because I thought, oh, a rabid dog story would probably be pretty fun, looks pretty short, entertaining, you know, I'll just read it. Was it entertaining? Was it fun? Now, obviously, it's going to be enjoyable. It's a Stephen King book, but... Yeah, it's, it's not going to be the light-hearted fun that you might expect from a dog story. Anyway, that's all for today. I'm going to be doing plenty more reviews in the future because I do really enjoy looking at things from... I dropped the book. I do really enjoy looking at things from a critical angle as well as my own opinion. And I, I, I just found that really fun. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye!